Hey everybody, it's Bill in Alaska coming back yet again on day 37, I think, 30, 36, 37, I'm always a day off, uh, day 37 we'll call it, of my incredible carnivore journey. Some people call it a carnivore diet, it's not a diet, it's a, uh, it's a choice and a lifestyle, a carnivore journey of the choice of putting the correct fuel in our bodies, the fuel that our bodies were designed to run on, which is protein and high fat. But day 37, oh boy, I have to apologize. I am wore out. I am more tired right now than I have been in a long, long time, but for good reason. I just got back in my spot where I'm sitting now, where I normally spend 24 seven for the last four years. I just got back in my spot after almost four hours of being out of bed while well, sitting on the edge of my bed for a, a good part of it but the other part was over at my bench uh working out but then another big part i have a new addition to my place i'm so excited about i'm going to show you guys here in just a couple minutes uh, a life-changing life-changing new addition it's it's going to seem simple to a lot of people but to, for me it's profound it's going to keep me out of my bed every single day and that, that's profound. Um, but yeah, I've been out of my bed for almost four hours. And I am just worn out. I'm still sweating a little bit. My face is probably glistening. I probably look pretty tired. Because man, I'm just ready to... I'm ready to conk out. But I wanted to get this video out today. But I've been filming for the last couple hours. And, whew, some of it, A lot of it was a struggle. I tried to do a little cooking segment. And my gimbal... I don't know if I did something wrong or it is a, a malfunction. I couldn't get my gimbal to work. So I was trying to do a little cooking session with one hand and film it with the other. And it, it was actually kind of a nightmare. But, uh, oh, there you are. Right when I'm filming, you decide to jump up. Uh, Daisy just jumped up. I haven't seen him in a couple hours. He's been outside. But anyway, yeah. Um, just got back in bed after almost four hours uh, because of my new addition. So um, I'm going to keep today's video a little bit short. I am just completely pooped. Um, but I'm going to show you the my new addition to the place. It's going to be a life-changing thing, a daily thing. Uh, and it's super exciting. So um, here, here's that. Hey, everybody. Coming at you live from the edge of my bed in the great state of Alaska. <laughs> uh, boy, I'm excited to show you something. Now I'm sitting in bed or on the edge of my bed. There's my corner where I've spent the last four years. Uh, well, I got something brand new that is so exciting. I got to turn you around. All right, you guys ready? Here's the big reveal. This wasn't here before. Dun, 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 <laughs> A brand new oak desk. Well, it's not brand new, but it's new to me. Uh, just got it off Craigslist uh, night before last, day before yesterday evening. My brother Jared picked it up and him and Samuel brought it in here. But for the first time in four years, you know, for the last four years, I've been cooking in bed. Um, I set my electric skillet in the last week, my hot air fryer, um, on a TV tray. That TV tray right there. Set the skillet and air fryer on there on, and then put it on my lap, and I cook from bed. Um, it's <laughs> kind of ridiculous, actually. Quite messy, no matter how careful you try to be. So I got a shop mat hanging right above me and a little dirt devil right above my head. But, yeah. I am not cooking from bed anymore. I've been feeling so much better these last few weeks that uh, I told Jared, you know, like a few days ago, I'm like, dude, I need a desk or a table or something in here where I can get up and actually cook some other place besides my bed. So I checked Craigslist and boom, found this. The guy still had it. Jared uh, got a hold of the guy and went and picked it up. And so here I am. So from now on, I'll be cooking from here. It's essentially my kitchen now. I'm so, so excited. It it may seem like a simple thing to, to most people, but to me, it's just profound. For four years, I've just been doing everything from my bed, but now I feel so much better. I'm actually going to be getting up, 
sitting in this chair. This chair is new too. Uh, it did have arms on it, but my brother Aaron ground the arms off. So my big old butt could fit in there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is going to be my kitchen, essentially, and filming area. Got my gimbal right there. And my filthy window. I know that thing needs clean so bad. But there it is. A life-changing thing for me. No more cooking from bed. Every day I'll be getting up, sitting there, cooking, filming. There's the log bench over there where I sit and uh, do my workout on the bag and with the uh, those bands. And then my best buddy is taking a nap on his favorite windowsill spot. But yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys. My new kitchen. I'm just so excited about it. All right, here's the view from me sitting in my chair, in my new kitchen. Well, it's a desk, but it's it's a kitchen to me. And you've been cooking from there for four years. There's my prison, my ex-prison. There's definitely a jailbreak going on. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, it's just amazing. A month ago, I would have never been in this situation and felt good enough to sit here. Fast forward almost five weeks, or about five weeks, on the new carnivore lifestyle, and look at me now. Pretty darn incredible. And you know, I just want to say to, to anyone who may be watching this for the first time, or may be in the same situation as I have been, just incredibly overweight, or other health problems who are stuck in their bed, stuck in their chair, a prisoner to their body and their lives, um, like I have been for so long, there is a way out. This carnivore lifestyle, first and foremost, you know, you need to seek your Father in Heaven's help. But through this carnivore lifestyle, there is freedom. You put the correct fuel in your body, the fuel that our bodies were designed to run on, and I'm speaking from incredible experience, uh, miracles happen, healing and energy and not just physical, but mental and spiritual. It's just, it's incredible. There, there is a way out of your prison. Um, it is through God and it is through this carnivore lifestyle of putting the correct fuel into our bodies. It's simply amazing. So if you're stuck and you're feeling helpless, like I have, like I, I have been for so long, there is a way out. There really, really is a way out and you can reclaim your life and get your freedom back. So I was going to make some burgers today. And um, one thing that bothered me from the video where I did my bacon wrap burgers, I kept calling them bacon wrap cheeseburgers over and over, even though I didn't use cheese. So I was like, okay, when I get set up and I make my burgers again, this time I'm going to do a little, a little demo on actually making bacon wrapped cheeseburgers. <laughs> So I'll do a little bit of that today. I'm going to make a couple uh, regular, just plain hamburger, and then I'll do one or two with uh, with the bacon and the cheese. And there's no wrong way to do it. This is just the way that uh, that I would do it, like if I was cooking back in the restaurant. All right, so that was a two-pound pack of hamburger. So I divided it into fourths, so uh, basically about eight ounces each. Of course, you can make yours, your patties any size that you'd like. So this is not working out. <laughs> My gimbal is uh, is acting up. I can't do it hands free uh, like I wanted to. So I'm gonna have to do this kind of cully wumpus. Um, I got the burger patty here, about eight ounces, and a block of cheese. I'm just gonna push that down in there until it's settled down in there, and then we're just gonna. Fold this meat over. This is not working out doing it with one hand. <laughs> but you get the gist. You just want to push that down into the patty. And then form that meat right around it. Pinch that to make a nice seam. Trying to do this with one hand feels so hobo. But until I can figure out what's up with my gimbal, we'll have to do it this way. You really want to make sure there's no gaps, no gaps or holes because that cheese will 
love to leak on out of there while that burger's cooking. Then we're gonna get that wrapped in some bacon. All right, my goodness. I still can't get this darn gimbal to function properly. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I almost don't wanna do this section because it's so difficult uh, trying to do it with one hand. It feels so amateur hour. Anyway, I got the, the beef with the cheese in it and I got my five slices of bacon laid out, but I also, I took two slices of bacon and cut them in half. I got them running this way and you'll see why. So I put that burger right about there, line it up with those two slide pieces of bacon and we're gonna wanna fold those over. This is gonna help hold the cheese in if it starts uh, oozing out the ends. And then this time we're gonna do a little bit different than I did last time. Oh, it's so difficult with one hand. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're gonna do the roll method. You just kind of get a nice roll going on and just roll it. The ends are tucked in with those side pieces. Those two side pieces that I cut in half, just pull it towards you. It'll help stretch those end pieces out and just continue the roll. And you got a big old bacon log. Burger stuffed with sharp cheddar cheese wrapped in seven pieces of bacon. That's a lot of bacon, but this is a big eight ounce piece of beef with a couple ounces of cheese in it. So uh, it's more than enough for one meal, almost enough for two, uh, two people, really. But there you go. And I'm sorry this is so shaky and amateur. I, uh, I'll make sure to get that gimbal fixed and, fi and figure out what's going on for my next video. Oh my goodness, what an ordeal. That was one of the most awkward cooking sessions I've ever had trying to do it all with one hand <laughs> and film it with the other because uh, my gimbal I don't know what's wrong with it anyway I decided to do two of the cheese stuffed bacon burgers about eight ounces of hamburger each a good couple ounces of cheese and seven slices of bacon so they're they're pretty huge so uh, let's get them cooking and we'll see how it turns out okay let's take a look see if we get any leaky cheese Oh yeah, a little bit of leaky cheese. Not too terrible. Looking pretty good though. All right, we're just letting her cool down just a little bit before we cut into it. A little bit of a jailbreak on the cheese on this one. But still should be pretty yummy. All right, let's see how we did. Well, I wish the lighting was better. Let me try to turn this, turn this around a little bit. Looks pretty good. All right. Well, hopefully on my next cooking segment, I'll have my gimbal all figured out, <clears throat> figured out and it won't be so, uh, not quite as terrible. <laughs> but that looks pretty darn good. Almost could have cooked it a few more minutes, but I made that hamburger just a little thick.
So, yeah, I apologize for that uh, amateur hour cooking session. <laughs> I almost didn't put it in the video, but, eh, can't be perfect all the time. Um, so I'm going to wrap this one up. This is a short one today. I got new plans. Now that I got my new little area there with my table, I got a bunch of new plans. Um, more cooking segments set up properly. Uh... I'm going to be getting into some canning. Uh, for any of you who have done canning out there, I want to can a bunch of beef and, and put that away. So I got some nice, good grass-fed beef uh, and canned beef. For... So anyway, I told you that cooking segment was a little bit uh, Kali Wampus, <laughs> a little amateur hour. I almost didn't put it in, but yeah, can't be, per can't be perfect all the time. Um... Yeah, so I'm going to wrap this one up today and call it a little shorter than normal. Uh, I'm ready for a nap. I uh, Now that I got that table in my, essentially my new kitchen area, I got a lot of plans I'm excited about. I'm going to get that gimbal fixed and rig, rig up a couple things from the ceiling for filming, looking straight down while I'm uh, doing recipes and cooking. Uh, I'm going to get into canning. Years ago, I was into canning, canning chicken and, and beef. Uh, I'm going to get back into that now that I'm more mobile and be able to get out of bed more. It's simply incredible. Uh, so I want to get a bunch of canned beef um, put away. Because, you know, that canned beef, for any of you who have done canning, know that meat lasts for years and years and years. I can some beef properly. And 10 years from now, I'll have good grass-fed canned beef. Um, so I'm going to get back into canning and film that. And just a bunch of other stuff. A surprise is coming down the road. Of I got a notebook. I'm just page after page of future content that I'm going to do with my channel. Especially now that I can get out of bed more. And I got that beautiful oak table to work with. So I'm going to wrap it up for today. Um, I love all you guys. I uh, I think about a lot of you. I've been in contact, contact with a lot of you through emails and texts back and forth. And... I think about you and I pray about you and uh, I love you guys. And like I always sign off with, be kind to one another and forgive each other. Forgive each other. It, it's so important. Kindness and forgiveness. One of the two greatest qualities that we can have as a human being and show towards another human being. Uh, not only does it make you feel good, but uh, on Judgment Day, when we're standing before our Maker, you know, how we treat others is really going to play a key part of uh, our eternity, where we're going to spend our eternity. So it's very important, and it's uh, it makes you feel so good when you treat others with kindness and forgiveness. Um, anyway, I'm rambling on. I love you guys, and I will see you on the next one in just a few days. And I'll be set up better, and I'll try to get a little more professional <laughs> in my presentations. Love you guys and I'll talk soon.